Right, so the extent to which the Labour Party is in hock to Israel and the Israel lobby is frankly obscene and is getting put under the microscope by a great many more would-be voters in an election year right now. But today, on Holocaust Memorial Day, they've gone above and beyond to demonstrate this fact. The worst possible time they could, really. It's literally been a day since the International Court of Justice ruled there was a prima facie case of genocide to consider further against Israel. And not only does the Labour Party put out on its official Twitter account a message of remembrance for Holocaust Memorial Day, but they also cite several other genocides too. Very much except the one we're seeing unfold before our eyes right now. Is that because Starmer, through his words and deeds, is too complicit? Are his feet too close to this particular fire? Well, any Labour MP who have dared to refer to Gaza as part of this period of remembrance has been forced to publicly apologise for doing so. That might well be the case, but also reinforces the belief of many that the Labour Party are to all intents and purposes an extension of the Israeli state these days. So who is this country going to be running the interest of if Keir Starmer ends up in charge in the near future? Right, so Labour's Twitter message on Holocaust Memorial Day omitting any mention of Gaza just a day after the International Court of Justice's ruling against Israel in the favour of South Africa and Palestine with the imposition of court orders that amount to a ceasefire to all intents and purposes and has been rightfully panned and attacked for the shameless and obvious ignorance of the current situation that it is. The ongoing genocide that we are witnessing fresh in our minds and Labour's acquiescence and apparent subservience to the Israeli state, led as it is by that Zionist without qualification Keir Starmer, has not been missed. Here's what Labour's appallingly tone-deaf message was. Today we remember the six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust, all the victims of Nazi persecution, and the victims of more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. Let us learn the lessons from the past and work towards a better future. Short but anything but sweet, there's something very obvious missing from it. Here's the thing with genocide, you can't just pick and choose the ones you want to remember and then ignore the rest because it makes you look like a big fat flaming hypocrite and that fact has not gone unnoticed. It is okay to remember the Holocaust and all say never again in relation to that. And of course, any right thinking human being would not at all disagree with that notion. It is apparently okay for the genocides of Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur and associate them with the Holocaust. But it is anything but okay to say one day after a case for genocide has been established against Israel, prima facie at this stage it might be, but when 30,000 Gazans are dead, including more than 12,000 children, to omit that, pretend that it's not genocide, and have the crass boldness to refer to the aforementioned atrocities as the more recent genocides, without bothering with the one that is literally happening right now before our eyes, that has been going on for the last three months, it's rancid. In fact, worse than that, it is apparently a disciplinary offence to draw that comparison now in Labour with the situation in Gaza having to be referred to apparently as a humanitarian disaster and not a genocide. An earthquake or a tsunami didn't call all these deaths. That's a humanitarian disaster. This has been a wanton, indiscriminate bombing and killing of civilians, destruction of infrastructure and services by an occupying power. Labour MP Kate Osamore made the mistake of making the comparison. She said yesterday, Tomorrow is Holocaust Memorial Day, an international day to remember the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, the millions of people murdered under Nazi persecution of other groups, and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and now Gaza. The ICJ ruling, in my view, now makes that entirely appropriate. I particularly like that she drew attention to other persecuted groups and not just fixated upon Jewish people, because far more than just the Jewish people were persecuted by the Nazis, such as the disabled or the Roma Gypsies. But Labour continued to make excuses for Israel, and so a public apology on social media was evidently demanded of Osamor. And she later tweeted out, Holocaust Memorial Day is a day to remember the six million Jews killed in the Holocaust and the genocides that have occurred since. I apologise for any offence caused by my reference to the ongoing humanitarian disaster in Gaza as part of that period of remembrance. Never apologise for having the courage of your conviction. It's a pity she chose to respond like this rather than lose the whip, though. But 
This is the heavy handed treatment that we're seeing being handed out to Labour MPs stepping out of line under the Starmer regime on this matter of Israel and Gaza. What can we, the general public, expect if Starmer becomes Prime Minister on this, I wonder? This isn't just a politician, an MP turning a blind eye to genocide. This is worse. This is a party leader demanding his MPs turn a blind eye. All in the immediate aftermath of the verdict of that ICJ hearing. Starmer himself, of course, is still to pass comment on the ICJ judgment. I can't imagine why a former human rights lawyer might be so shy on this matter. Might it be because if the ICJ eventually do find Israel has committed genocide, according to evidence, and not merely prima facie as they currently do, that might put a ignorant Starmer in the position of someone who would have supported that. Whoops. After all, he did say Israel had the right to cut off power and water to Gaza. He's never apologised for it. It's on film for all to see. And to hail the ICJ ruling and provisional orders handed down, that would mean admitting that he was wrong, and he never does that. And it would also mean that Israel must be held to account. There's no statute of limitations on genocide or aiding and abetting in it. He's got that following him for the rest of his life. But he can't do that. Too many in Labour cannot do that. They can't apologise. They can't hold Israel accountable because they owe too much to the Israel lobby to be able to. Here's a fun fact, for example, on all of this. Labour Friends of Israel. 73 Labour MPs counted themselves as members of Labour Friends of Israel before that ICJ judgment was ruled out. Afterwards, there are still 73 of them. Should we now consider them Labour Friends of Genocide instead? Two weeks ago, Margaret Hodge, Ruth Smith, Louise Elman and Christian Wakeford, again in Israel, happily posed for a snap with Israeli President Isaac Herzog. This guy had signed missiles to be dropped on Gaza, was quoted by the ICJ themselves for having spoken with genocidal intent, and whilst in Davos in Switzerland has found himself the subject of criminal complaints as well. Meanwhile, while Starmer remains tight-lipped, desperately waiting for presumably someone to tell him how to get out of this mess, the UK Foreign Office has continued to defend Israel, saying South Africa's case against Israel was wrong and provocative because, of course, this Tory shambles must know better than the 15 judges at the ICJ who believe genocide has been proven at first glance. Who'd be stupid enough to believe the Tories over them? There, don't answer that. Any opposition worth its salt would be able to put itself on the right side of history, though, show leadership and give the Tories an absolute political pasting for taking such a rancid, offensive stance. But sadly, Keir Starmer is utterly incapable of that, being more ardently pro-Israel than they are, to the point his own MPs are barred from voicing their own opinions on this. Thatcher supported apartheid South Africa, of course, so perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that her heirs in both the Tory party and the Labour party are with Israel even now, even on Holocaust Memorial Day. If you're going to make exceptions for some genocides, then you aren't against genocide. That sums up the leadership of both main parties here. Never again are just words when never again is happening now and they're standing by in silence letting it happen. And today of all days it continues. Both Sunak and Starmer revolt me by their silence because silence is complicity. If you have a platform and you aren't using it to speak out on this issue, then shame on you. But that applies most of all to those who would lead us. Because I don't plan on following you anywhere if you can't take a stand on something like this and be on the right side of history and humanity, frankly. Money and influence have bought your silence, haven't they? But it won't win you my vote. Perhaps they should be directed to this video here where I went over the verdict, went over the fact that although the word ceasefire never came out, that is in practice what the ICJ have actually demanded. And if you haven't seen my take on this verdict, well, why have you not? You can find it here. I reckon you should watch it here next. I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.